Good morning. This morning's economic report shows that America's growing economy added 211,000 jobs in the month of March. The American economy has now added jobs for 31 months in a row, created more than 5.1 million new jobs for American workers. The unemployment rate is now down to 4.7 percent. It's below the average rate of the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. These millions of new jobs are evidence of an economic resurgence that is strong, broad, and benefiting all Americans. Real after-tax income has grown by more than 8 percent per person since I took office. That means, on average, Americans have an income that is $2,100 higher this year than it was in 2001 after adjusting for inflation. More Americans own their homes than at any time in history. Minority home ownership has reached record levels. Consumer confidence is at its highest point in nearly four years. Productivity is high. Inflation is contained. Manufacturing activity is growing, and the small business sector, sector is thriving. The economy has expanded for 17 straight quarters. And last year, the American economy grew at a healthy rate of 3.5 percent. That's the fastest rate of any major industrialized economy. These gains are the result of the energy and the effort of American workers, small business owners, and entrepreneurs. They're also the result of pro-growth economic policies. The tax cuts I signed left $880 billion with our nation's workers, small business owners, and families. They've used that money to fuel our economic resurgence. Not everyone in Washington agreed with the decision to let people keep more of their own money. On the day that Republicans in the House and Senate were finalizing the 2003 tax cuts, one Democratic leader said these cuts would, quote, do nothing to create jobs. Facts have proven the critics wrong 5.1 million times over. Tax relief has done exactly what it was designed to do. It's created jobs and growth for the American people. Yet some are now proposing that we raise taxes, either by repealing the tax cuts or letting them expire. These are the same politicians who told us that letting, Americans, letting America's working families keep more of their own money would, would be irresponsible, reckless, and shameful. They were wrong then, and they are wrong now. Our economy grows when the American people make the decisions about how to save, spend, and invest their money. To keep our economy creating jobs and opportunity, Congress needs to show its trust in the American people and make the tax relief permanent. Congress also needs to restrain spending so we can stay on track to cut the deficit in half by 2009. And if necessary, I will enforce spending restraint through the exercise of the veto. The American people expect their leaders to address other key leaders that directly affect their family budgets and bottom line, especially health care and energy. When the cost of energy and health care rise, families are squeezed and small businesses suffer. I propose practical reforms that would make health care more available and affordable. I put forward an energy initiative that will make our dependence on Middle Eastern oil a thing of the past. I've also laid out a plan to make America more competitive by increasing our investment in scientific research, encouraging research and development in the private sector, and improving math and science education. I urge the Congress to move forward on all these important priorities so we can keep America the economic leader of the world and allow more families and small businesses to realize the American dream. Thank you for your time.